joining us now to talk about it. We have Caitlin Collins, CNN White House correspondent, Shan Wu, he's a defense attorney and former federal prosecutor, and now a CNN legal analyst, and Errol Lewis, CNN political commentator. Great to have all of you. Happy Friday. Errol, let's start with um, our reporting about what the Mueller hearings are going to look like. Both sides, Democrats and Republicans, have been staging their own mock hearings behind the scenes, separately, of course, about how they're going to take on Robert Mueller, who is a tough nut to crack, let's admit, for both sides, okay? And so here's what we have learned. We will put this up. This is what the House Judiciary, the Democrats on the House Judiciary plan to do. They want to tackle five areas. Tell uh, telling Don McGahn to fire Robert Mueller. That would be a good one, what Robert Mueller knows about that. Telling Don McGahn to publicly deny that Trump told him to fire Mueller. Telling Corey Lewandowski to tell Attorney General Sessions to limit the investigation. Telling Corey Lewandowski to tell Jeff Sessions he did not meet with Lewandowski or Trump will fire him, alleging witness tampering of Manafort, Cohen, and others. How do you think this is going to go? Uh, I think it's going to maybe not work as well as the Democrats might hope. That stuff, while extremely important, runs counter to what I think the, the, the broader purpose of the hearings are supposed to be. What the, the Democratic leadership has said over and over again is that they want to have a 1974 moment where in Watergate, what started out as charges really sort of galvanized the nation and really sort of uh, made clear what was going on and why there was a problem. It provided really critical context. And it, it, to, to do it now and to say, well, the president told him to fire this guy and so forth. Without the context, it won't mean anything. Why was he trying to fire Mueller? What was it all about? Yes, it could be a violation of the law, and it's important to, to draw that out. But the goal of sort of letting the, the public know what's at stake here and why it's important, I think, kind of gets undermined if you get into this back and forth. And, of course, the Republicans are going to do their best to, to muddy the waters, and it'll look like one more big partisan fight the kind that viewers tend to tune out. Shan, when, when you look at this, what happens when Robert Mueller is faced with these questions, when Mueller is asked to go into more about these instances of possible obstruction, and when faced with the question that we do understand Democrats want to ask, which is, if a regular citizen engaged in these activities in a way that fits this fact pattern, would an ordinary citizen be indicted? What does Robert Mueller say to that? Well, I think the key for the Democrats really is how they ask Mueller these questions. He's a former prosecutor as well as FBI director. He is comfortable with direct exam style questions. That's where they will elicit what they need from him. They really need like an audiobook performance from him. They want to ask what, who, where, and how. If they try and hit him with a lot of direct leading cross-exam type questions, they're going to run into a stone wall with that. So to get those answers, they need to refer him back to what he's already written in his report have him draw those points out. The Republicans are going to have to hit him with cross-exam questions because they want to score points. That's going to be a very tough road for them to go. Kaylin, we had Andrew McCabe, um, deputy, former deputy director and acting director of the FBI on, who has briefed Robert Mueller in the past for hearings just like this. And he said that no one is better prepared. The briefing books that Robert Mueller can consume and digest are legendary. So he will know his own report word for word. And, you know, Andrew McCabe's feeling is that he won't really deviate from that. Yeah, and it's something he spent two years of his life working on. So, of course, he knows this report backwards and forwards, and that's what's going to be the test for these lawmakers, some of them who have not even read it. And that's why it's kind of hard to overstate just how much they're trying to prepare for this by not only rereading the report, going through it, holding these mock hearings where their aides are playing Robert Mueller so they can try to sharpen those questions, but also they're going back and watching Robert Mueller's past testimony anytime he's made public remarks because they want to see how he operates and essentially what they've been saying is that he can talk about something and not and, uh, essentially filibuster. And that is something that they're concerned about because, of course, they're going to be constrained for time. That is something that essentially uh, they're both looking at where Democrats know this is their only chance to try to bring this report to life, make it a movie instead of a book for people who haven't read it. And Republicans know this is their only chance to try to discredit the man who's been investigating the president uh, who's from their party. 